Larry Bobel, and this is the Beauville and Newtown Railroad, or Model Railroad. <clears throat> well, good evening, track gang, and welcome to what it will be eventually, Vlog 38. <laughs> I have no idea when I'm actually going to get done with this. Um, it happens to be uh, Monday the 23rd. Here I go again, Heath. Nope, it's the 22nd. Okay, so it's Monday the 22nd of November 2021, and this will be Vlog 38 for 2021, November 2021. Anyway, um, I've got an interesting little project that I want to work on over here at the bench, and that's the reason why we're here. Um, there, I, I had, <laughs> the, the I, there was a couple weeks ago, actually it's been probably closer to a month and a half, um, I was sitting here at the bench and I wanted to be able to test locomotives and clean them at the sort of mobile desk or the mobile bench. And with the way I had this set up, I couldn't do that uh, with the one power pack. So... I just went through one of the little boxes of goodies that I've got, and I happened to come across this dude. Now, this is an old Atlas selector. Yes, it's missing screws. It's not a big deal. Actually, it's a connector, not a selector. It's a connector. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up my test power pack, which is over here. Um, and I'm going to wire it to that selector, or that connector, and then off that connector, I'm going to run um, two sets of wires. One that will go to the test track in the back here, so I can actually test a locomotive on test track before I take it out to the layout after I've cleaned it on the lower bench. And over at the lower bench, on the other side of this connector, I'll have a set of leads that goes over to the mobile bench so that I can go ahead and test on there. Um, this way I can use one power pack and have it feed two places. At least that's the whole idea. Whether it works or not is another story. Um, I did check it. It does have continuity, so we should be in good shape there. Why do you want to do this? Well, there's a good reason. Um, uh, as most of you saw on Facebook, um, I was over at a buddy of mine's house the other day, he has got uh, he had gotten a hold of a HO gauge pike, a little four by eight sheet of plywood with two tracks on it, and he was having issues. Um, him and his dad went through, and he thought he had it, and it started having problems. So he hit me up and said, "Hey, is there a possibility that you can come over here and take a look at this?" Not a problem. So I went over there Saturday, and I spent about uh, probably about an hour and a half, two hours. Then we got everything working well at least we got the track working um what it needed was a good cleaning it hadn't been cleaned in a while it hadn't been used in a while so that wasn't a big deal we got it fixed but he's got four locomotives that need help and he had another buddy of his take a look at them and he wouldn't touch them why because three of them are the old Tyco mantuas that are a pain in the rear end to deal with and i told him I said, look, I said, they're great when they run. They are a pain in the butt when they don't. I said, but, I said, if you want, I'll take a look at them and see what I can do with them because I've had to do the same thing on my railroad. As you know, some of the things that I've picked up over the last uh, six months or so has been some of the old Tyco Mantua stuff. So, I'm somewhat familiar with it. <laughs> somewhat familiar with it. I'm rather familiar with it. Gotta love email. Junk mail. Anyway, um, so that's the first part of this. I want to get in here, I want to set this up, and I want to get it to where I can use both the test track and also have a way of running locomotives over here while I'm trying to do maintenance on them. Because you can't do really do maintenance on them when they're on the track. It's, it's kind of tough to do. So, I've already got my wire cut. I've actually got two pieces or four pieces of wire sitting here. Um, that'll be good. 
I'll be able to drop them in. The only thing I have to figure out though is um, how I'm actually going to wire up to this uh, to this piece of test track back here. But I think I know. I think I know how I'm going to do it. Um, so we'll uh, we'll deal with that here in a minute, and uh, we'll be back. Well, after futzing with this thing for probably close to an hour, <laughs> uh, it's going to be probably a little hard to see. Probably going to be a lot hard to see. Um, but right down here is now my selector, and right now it's all off. Um, the power pack was still on, but th that was off. So if I want to run a locomotive on my test track, I'll just have to move this up a little bit. I just bring this first collect, uh, connector up. And I can run the test track. Now, once I'm done, if I want to go back over to the bench, the lower bench, to work on a locomotive, sorry, I come over here. And I've got a set of alligator clips here, and then I just flip the switch over here on this side on, and then I can use the alligator clips to test out locomotives or whatever other powered uh, equipment I've got on the railroad. Now that I'm done playing with that, <laughs> I'm going to get set up here to. Uh, actually start messing around with uh, a couple of the things and this here is a bit uh, I'm, I'm gonna this here is also a bit of a train show uh, haul um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into that first um, from this train show that I just went to this past weekend uh, up in Westminster Maryland it was a nice show it was worth the five bucks to go in there and take a look around to see what was there they just did not have a lot of HO or N-Gage stuff there. Well, not that I'm into N-Gage at all, but they didn't have a lot of that there. They had a lot of uh, O and O27 and some G scale, uh, but really not as a whole lot as far as HO went. So, um, since I'm standing here babbling, let me go into my neat little bag of stuff here that I got from the show. Now, the cars were three for five. <laughs> if that gives you any type of an indication. But what I did pick up was another stock car. Uh, this one here happens to be for the Sioux line. So I'm going to have to make up a car card for him. I also picked up something else that I didn't have and that is a Denver and Rio Grande Western gondola. Now this one here I didn't realize it until after I got out. It, it's a little bit distressed already, which not a big deal. You know, gondolas were were used to getting beat up, um, so I'm going to. I'm, it's already been converted to Katie's, which is nice. I just have to make sure that they're the right height, and we should be good there. And then last but not least, and this is I've been kind of looking for one of these, um, not really, but kind of. Uh, this is a, I think, what they consider a 50-foot gondola. If I take the other one, which is a normal size gondola, and put it, I can literally put it inside. Uh, so I've got, finally got a longer gondola car. Uh, this one here happens to be for the Michigan Central. I'm hoping that shows up. So I've got another car that I have to, well, I have to convert this one. And I also have to uh, get a car card for it. But... That was the train show haul this time around. Um, I, you know I've got other stuff in here that I had gotten from the last train show. Um, that is still sitting over here. I have not messed with it yet. Um, in fact, there's, there's one of them. That was the Pennsylvania, and I think the other one should be the cotton belt. Yep. The only thing I have to do with it is I have to fix the couplers on him. Um, and then, of course, I got the stuff from Santa Fe Bob that I have to work on. <laughs> my, my two blank canvases, um, those will come at a later date. 
Uh, I'm not sure when that later date may be, but those will come at a later date. Probably going to be next year. Uh, because here it is, I'm supposed to be working on that DPM kit, and I can't. The, the weather went from, you know, nice 60, 70 degrees, and it's been down in the 40s and 30s the last couple of days. That's the reason why I'm down here messing with this. Because I can't do anything with the, I can wash it, but I can't, I can't paint it. So I'm hoping maybe we'll get some halfway decent weather coming up because I don't really have any place to paint. Now granted, <clears throat> I could come down here in the uh, work area and I could use acrylics. <coughs> Sorry, that went down a wrong hole. Um, the problem is the dryer's right here. It's an electric dryer, but it's still a dryer. Um, and there isn't really any ventilation back here. In fact, the basement really doesn't have any ventilation at all. Um, there's one window, and that's back near the furnace. <laughs> and that happens to be where the back door is. Which is on the whole opposite end of the house. So, you know, I really can't do much right now. So, I'm going to stop babbling. I'm going to get to work, and I'll show you what we're working on. Give me a bit. Okay, so it is now Sunday the 20... Uh, geez, it was... The 28th of November. And um, <clears throat> I didn't show a whole lot of what I did. Only because of the fact that I've basically pretty much beat it up like a... Or, you know, beat it up like a dead horse, honey. So, one thing I did want to touch on, though. Um, these old Tyco Mantuas, and these are the ones that belong to my buddy Eric... He had three of these, and he had a steam engine that needed some help. Um, I got the other two diesels uh, working. Um, this one, unfortunately, is uh, beyond repair. Um, the plastic wheels on the rear truck here that are supposed to have uh, traction tires. First problem, there's no traction tire there second issue is is they're actually cracked um, and with the way that Tyco Mantua did these back in the day there's really no way to get the side frame off that I know of without breaking it um, and I'm not willing to go in that extent and he was not really 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 didn't really wasn't looking forward to that either so um, what I have done is I've got it, I mean, the, like I said, the other three, or, or the other two plus the steam locomotive, they're running fine. That one will just uh, become, a, I guess, a display piece for him. Um, and as you can tell, I'm still sitting here at the bench, and there's a reason for that. Um, that is the fact that I've got some other stuff that I wanted to work on um, that I haven't touched yet. I mean, here it is, it's now, it's now October. And we had a train show back in or November, and we had a train show back in October, and I still have the stuff that I bought back in October is still in boxes. Um, so that's going to be my next little piece is going ahead and working on um, the, uh, the things that I've picked up over the last two train shows. Um, so that is going to be my next thing. Uh, also, over here at the bench is the fact that we've also got the uh, the other trolley that came from Mr. Santa Fe Bob that I wanted to take a look at. So, <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do next. So, we'll be back. Alright, this <laughs> is a rather interesting little setup. Uh, this is the internals to that streetcar. Um, and what they did here, what Mantua did here is, or, or Tyco is really, really unique. Um, I'm still trying to figure out, okay, so the motor's sitting, the motor is actually sitting behind this. And it's geared on both ends, and then it goes to the, obviously goes to the wheels, the wheel sets. But the wiper configuration, I don't know if that's going to show up. There's the wiper. So you've got a wiper on the front wheel and then a wiper on the wheel rear wheel. <laughs> okay. And then the other side is picked up through the frame. 
fascinating. All right, let me get back to work. Okay, so I got finished putting <laughs> putting together the uh, pieces of rolling stock and fixing a couple of things. So we now have the Michigan Central. Mm, oh wait a minute. There we go. The Michigan Central uh, gondola uh, is ready to go. Um, my Reading, I'm sorry, not Reading, Denver Rear Grand Western gondola is ready to go. Um, the Sioux Line uh, cattle car, uh, or stock car, this was, I, I made a goof on this. I actually converted both sides and forgot that, wait a minute, my stock cars are only supposed to be converted on one end. These are transition cars, and I just happened to notice something else, so we'll just go ahead and take care of that right there. It's snipping off the little do funky that hangs down on the uh, on the uh, horn hooks. And this was one of the cars I picked up at the Timonium show. Those other three are the ones I just picked up at the Westminster uh, Fairground show. And then, last but not least, and of course, this one here happens to be right up Mr. Uh, Train Freak's alley, Mr. Jason, uh, the Cotton Belt boxcar. So, all of the cars are now put together. All of them have, couple, have the right couplers. So now, I'm going to go ahead and inventory them. And then, um, the other thing I'm going to do is... Uh, get the car cards made for them and then they'll go over to the layout and be ready to go. So you don't need to see all that because you've seen it before. Okay, so I was actually going to do this as a separate video, but I decided since it came early, I'll do it now. Um, so the other day I was on uh, eBay, which is <laughs> uh, one of those things, I guess. Um, I was just looking around. I had been looking for uh, something in particular and I actually found it. Now what's even more interesting is <clears throat> I actually put it into my watch list and about 20 minutes after I did I get a message from the seller um, making an offer to me to buy it to which I jumped on it because I was like well you know <laughs> okay cool. So what am I babbling about? Well let's go ahead and swing down here to the to the table and as you can see in the background I've actually got another box and that box is stuff that I had actually worked on the, uh, yesterday uh, I put car cards together for um, so now I've got another one that I'm going to put a car card together for um, so like I said this came from eBay and it came early which like I said is fine that was really unexpected now I as you can tell I already had opened the box to take a look at it and there is a business card in here too um, and the uh, the site was actually Tom Jr's so that's uh, that's rather nice anyway what, uh, what what I what did I pick up well what I picked up was that. Um, I had made mention a while back that I I'd actually found that this railroad is another one of those East Coast railroads and I didn't have representation on the Beauville and Newtown for this so now I've got it. This is one scheme that they used. The other one was a, uh, a yellow, a yellowish orange and a black I think it was uh, two-tone. But this one here actually has Susie Q because that was what the Susquehanna's nickname was. Um, so this is uh, this is an Atherin unit, obviously. Um, he's already got uh, KD couplers on it, which is nice. So I don't have to worry about doing a conversion. Now, obviously, because I still run plastic wheels, it still has plastic wheels on it, so that's okay. Now what's interesting is, is I just happened to notice that there's a sticker on the bottom of this that says Frank Bain. And if I'm not mistaken, one of these other cars that I had, I thought, 
had that scene. Maybe not. I thought I'd seen that someplace before. I'm not sure on what what piece of rolling stock now though. I thought I'd seen seen that. Hmm. Anyway, so very cool. Very, very, very cool. So now I've got to make up, like I said, I've got to add that to the list and I've got to make up another car card and we'll go from there. So um, th this is going to end uh, vlog 38. Um, I don't have anything else going on at the moment. So you all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We'll see ya.